So I have a customized instrument cluster with a bare metal look. My tunnel cover here has been modified. It's got a bare metal look. And the steering wheel here, the stock one, I don't think we can keep that. I can go and buy an aftermarket steering wheel. Yeah, I don't know. I think I need a steering wheel that fits this picture. Let's build something custom. Coming up. Let's get this steering wheel out of here. Let me see what happens if I do this. Tough as nails, eh? Looks like that plan's not gonna work. Try something else. Hmm. Looks like the plastic they made back there was tough. I have to come up with another idea. I thought this plastic would just shatter if I hit it with a hammer. But it ain't happening. Let's try plan B. Melting the plastic here. Yeah. <laughs> now who's that boss? <clears throat> Tough plastic this, I tell ya. There we go, look at that. <laughs> This is actually a lot of fun. Isn't it in all of us a part that just likes to destroy things? <laughs> and now I have the essence of the steering wheel exposed. And on the floor, <laughs> a pile of plastic bits and pieces. Very tough plastic, mind you. You know, we are actually very privileged. I mean, how many people have seen the insides of a Ford steering wheel? <laughs> we must be among a select few on this planet, so count yourselves lucky. <laughs> so that typical chain and wrenches or sprocket thing has been done so many times, I think it's already kind of boring. So I think I'm going to try something else. <laughs> Okay, I made 40 of these <laughs> pipe slices. I used uh, one inch pipe, one inch in diameter, 25 mil, and the length is also one inch, 25 millimeters. I suppose it was quite a boring job, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, if you want to do. So now I'm going to open all 40 of them like this, with this big old screwdriver. So the thing that's taking the most time actually is cleaning up the insides um, of these little slices. I mean that cutting wheel has left quite a serious burr here. 
if that's the right word. So I have to take them out with a file, one by one. <laughs> now doing this to 40 of these guys is a freaking pain in the ass. There's still some more. So the next step in my plan is to do this. Slip this over here. And I think you might figure where I'm going with this. Come on. So I've just got to get a bunch of them over this round bar ring now. And I'm going to close them up again using my water pump pliers here. And so on and so forth. Alright, so here's my plan of attack. Um, I'm going to start right here. I'm leaving about a quarter inch gap in this piece of slit pipe. Six millimeters and I'm, I see that if I stick this in here, it just holds it nicely in place. In place. <laughs> so I'm just going to tack it on there now. And then I'm going to keep doing that with the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So let's see how it's going to work. Okay, here goes. <coughs> okay, that's not too bad. Next lady for a shave. <laughs> okay, let's see, I definitely need to open that cap some. Maybe a little bit more. Right, where's my little spacing device? <laughs> I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna stack this one on too. Yeah. And so I'm going to carry on. I need to open this one a little bit more as well. So yeah, I think you're getting the idea. I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing all 40 of them. So I'm just going to plug along. Let's see where it, what it turns out like. Making progress. It's taking a little bit of time. <laughs> because you got to make sure that each one kind of lines up with the next. And that they open up about the same amount, so you don't want to end up with a wobbly steering wheel. Uh, but yeah, it's feeling pretty good. Let me carry on and do a few more. Yeah, so I'm about halfway. <laughs> and I'm starting to think about something cold. It's 35 degrees Celsius here today. That's, I think, about 95F. So it's not exactly what you would call wealthy weather. But here's the thing. Let me show you a motto that's been sitting on the wall of my workshop for many, many years. Yeah, so if you don't mind, can I please read this for you? I think it's very valuable. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. And even education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. So persistence is key. I have many guys saying to me that I haven't got skills. But how do you get skills? Through persistence and determination. Keep practicing. 
there's a saying that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become a master of what, at what you do. Think about it. 10,000 hours. It's a fair amount of time. So the Villiers persist and finish your steering wheel. <laughs> hey, I miscalculated. it. I need another seven slices. <laughs> that would make it a total of 47 that I need. There we go. Better go and cut them. Persistence. <laughs> Remember. And the final piece in the puzzle goes into place. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. I just got to tack it now. <laughs> Global warming is trying to get the better of me. So. <laughs> there you go. Time to cool down properly. It's now more than 38 degrees Celsius. Which if I'm not wrong is more than 100 degrees F. Very unusual weather for us. So, I'm in the plunge pool. I'm cooling down properly. Cheers, you oaks. <laughs> Bye. I think I'm getting there. So I gotta do something here. And maybe oh, I wonder what I'm gonna do here. Let me think about it. I think I'm gonna weld this completely as well. I don't like this gap that's sitting here at the moment. Excuse me, well I spend the rest of my life grinding this bloody steering wheel. Why can't I just go and buy one like everyone else? Phew, okay so finally this business is finished. All nice and smooth. <laughs> right, now what about the center cup? What am I going to do there? So check this, this is what I found, so excited to clean it up to see what it looks like. It used to fit right here, I'm not sure what you would call it. So I've welded on these two little tabs here and on my cap, it's going to sit like that. A little screw in there and a little screw in there to hold it in place. And that's what we have so far. What do you think? <laughs> Let me know. Um, I'm not finished yet. I think I still need to do something here. I think I might cap this with some round bar or something. Yeah, so this, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Support piece, connection piece. I don't know what to call it. But it does look a little bit flimsy to me. So I'm busy messing around with a piece of round bar that I'm planning to put on to the edge here to sort of line it. It's a 3 8 round bar, 10 millimeter. So once I've got it sort of fine tuned and bent properly, I'm just gonna stitch it on. I think it'll bulk it up a bit and make it look a little bit better. Okay, let me Give this a light tack here for a start and then I think another one here in the back. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. I have to do one here on the front side as well. Right, I'm going to work my way along and take the clamp off now. I have to bend this a little bit. 
that way. It needs a little bit of heat right there so I can get a nice tight bend there. So let's see. I'm going to cut it off here so I can take it that away. I should have used bloody quarter inch, six mil, it would have been much easier. But I'm running and I did cut too short. <laughs> I have to fill that up with welding or something. Let me just give him a tack, he looks good right here now. Okay. Right, so now I gotta do something about my story that needs a tiny little bend right here. That's gonna be near impossible. Okay, I'm gonna give it a tack right there and then whack it with a hammer and see what happens. Want to get some heat in there. Okay, I'm going to take it over the anvil. There we go. Exactly what I wanted. Got a little bend in. So I've already got it tacked on the back side, so I'm just going to give it light tacks here on my marks. And then I'm just going to fill in this space here. <laughs> this gap with some welding. And maybe an earth clamp would help. Let's try again. Gap, what gap? <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more. But we're getting there. I think it's working. But I'm going to have to do the same on this side now. Otherwise it's not going to look right. And then obviously I have to repeat the whole business on this side. Cool, let's do it. So I got all my round bars in place. But this plastic ring here, I think that needs to go. It contains the slip rings for the original Uta button. Or horn button. But I'm going to make another plan. So I think this piece of plastic must go bye bye. I don't know how it comes off. But this hammer will sort it out. <laughs> what a tough thing as well. Huh. I can't see a way in which it is attached. Let me try something else. Okay, let's see what happens if I do this. Hmm. Aha! There we go. So yeah, just looking at it. I don't think it was meant to be a replaceable part. <laughs> All right, good boy. Now I'm gonna make another plan. All right, scratching through my junk, I found this, and um, I could maybe fit that there somehow. Tack it on. It's a little small in diameter, so maybe I should edge this with round bar as well. It will just uh, suit the pattern. <laughs> yeah.
got a little bit of an opening there. I'm just going to put it on the angle and hammer it down. Squashing it up in a vise like this, that works really well. So it's pulled in nicely where the around my ends meet. So I'm just going to give it a tack there now. And try not to weld my vise at the same time. And there we have it. You can't even see where my joint is. <laughs> it's not perfect. It's not exactly 100% round. And if you look long and hard enough, you will actually see my joint. But certainly good enough. Um, so I didn't tack it on this side at all. So that looks quite nice. I only tacked it on the back side. And you can't see the back. Anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And there we have it. Let's put it on the steering wheel. Alright, so my contraption is going to go on like this. This hole here is just slightly bigger than the, the steering wheel's collet. What do you call it? The collet? That center part. I'm just going to line it up nicely. Let's just give it a light tack on this side here. And another small one because I first just want to go and try it on the truck. If it doesn't work okay I can always take it off again. Let's go and try it shall we? <laughs> Not exactly what you would call a light steering wheel is it? Okay, let's slip it on here and try it for size. Yeah. I think my ring is good enough. I'm going to just weld it up. And then we can clean the steering wheel up a little bit. I'm going to put it back and fit the center cap and see what the final product looks like. So I've cleaned it up with a wire brush. And now I'm just applying some of my favorite boiled linseed oil mix. So that it doesn't rust. Um, yeah, it's not going to stay as shiny as it is now, unfortunately. But it still gives a nice looking finish. Suppose you can apply a clear coat if you want, but I'm not a fan of clear coats. <laughs> and my new custom steering wheel is finally in place. I'm happy. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's not everyone's cup of tea. Each to his own. I'm cool with that. One thing I can tell you for sure I don't think there's another steering wheel like this one on the planet. Oh, by the way, you can see I've got the instrument cluster removed at the moment. Because next up for me is electrical wiring. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching my carrying ons out here in the forest. I appreciate it. So I'll see you next time when I get going on some electricery. Until then, have a good one. Ha, ha, ha.